Tonight, the protesters brought their message to the streets of downtown Los Angeles. This is day three of Occupy LA, and you're watching Inside Out News. protesters gathered for the third day of Occupy Los Angeles at City Hall in downtown LA. Events began, began this morning at 9 a.m. with about 30 protesters marching over to the LA courthouse where the Michael Jackson case is currently going on. The protesters marched over there to bring their message to the major media outlets. The protesters counted 78 media vans around the courthouse so they marched over there in hopes of letting them know that they are here, that they are at City Hall, they are across the street and they have a message and they want to be heard. Whether or not uh, that will actually bring national media over to them is yet to be seen. However, today was the first day in which I saw more than just a few local, van local media vans. There were, there were all of the major news channels that cover uh, Los Angeles were here today. They were not only reporting, they were also interviewing protesters. I saw several of the local radio stations here interviewing protesters. I saw photographers, I saw uh, other journalists, print journalists, I saw uh, a reporter from the Los Angeles Times here. They were interviewing the protesters. So it seems to me that the longer the protesters are here, the more people will pay attention, the more the media is paying attention. So it seems to me that it is only a matter of time before the national media, the cable news outlets, come to City Hall to cover the protests here. This afternoon, the United Los Angeles Teachers Association, the progressive uh, subcommittee of the United Teachers of LA, for, uh, held a protest, held a march with the protesters. They marched through downtown Los Angeles visiting uh, local branches of, of many of the corporate banks, such as Bank of America, Chase, uh, Wells Fargo. They were, they were going from bank to bank protesting uh, what they saw as the, as the crux of what is wrong with the United States, and that is the banking system. They attempted to, to go inside many of these banks, but the banks locked down their, their entrances and would not let them in. I, I did get one report from one of the protesters that was on this march. She said that about three or four teachers actually were able to get inside one of the banks and, and, and that they were not uh, undercover in any way. They were holding signs they, and, and somehow they came through a back door, but they, they, they went in and they brought their message to the people inside the banks. This evening, the Answer LA Coalition uh, held a march in solidarity with the Wall Street protesters. Um, uh, just really quick, uh, you can hear, uh, I, I hope that you can hear uh, all of the honking that is going on. Uh, since I've been here on Saturday, there have been people honking, people driving by uh, City Hall honking in solidarity with the protesters. Uh, this, is, this, is, this is not nothing new, they've been doing this all day, they've been doing it all weekend. Um, going back to the march, uh, Answer LA held this march in solidarity with the protesters in, in, in Wall Street. They were, they were standing in solidarity against the police brutality that has been going on in New York. In particular, the 700 arrests that occurred on the Brooklyn Bridge over the weekend. They marched to the financial district. They brought their message to what is the symbol of corporate America in Los Angeles. Uh, I, I marched with the protesters. There was about 200 people marching through the streets of downtown Los Angeles today. What I what I found was that was was very striking uh, was that there were, there were many people out on the streets watching the protesters march uh, march through the city. Uh, 
there were people in cars honking in solidarity. They were they were putting their, their fists up. They were, they were giving thumbs up to the protesters, showing that they were in solidarity with them. Uh, you, get, you get a real sense that the protesters um, really are representing the people of Los Angeles, that the people of this city really feel that the protesters are doing something in their name and that they are sympathetic to the protesters' cause, that it is not just the cause of the protesters, but it is their cause as well. I saw people dancing in the sidewalks, children dancing, uh, security, uh, I saw a security guard, she was dancing uh, as the protesters marched and chanted. Uh, the protesters were chanting slogans such as, uh, uh, you say cut back, we say fight back. They were saying, whose street, our street. They were, they were, they were ch uh, chanting slogans that for, for free education, for jobs, for, for health care. Uh, many, many of these issues that, that we've heard come out of other protests uh, around the country and in Wall Street. Uh, after the, uh, the, the march was over as they were coming back to City Hall. They marched past a, a branch of Bank of America. And as they passed the Bank of America uh, building, you could hear uh, loud boos from, from the protesters. They were booing Bank of America. They, they began chanting slogans against Bank of America, against the Wall Street bankers. Um, it was a very clear message that the protesters are not happy with corporate banks, with the banking system in the United States. That, that message is clear. Uh, I had the opportunity to interview some more protesters today at Occupy LA. I asked the protesters who belonged to the 99% and if they were part of the 99% and here's what some of them had to say. We are 99%. The human beings should be first and see the profit. Right. Over the people should be over the profit. Right. We're the 99 percent. We're not the one percent that own the banks and the supermarket chains and the factories and the mines and the oil fields and the industrial uh, military complex. I'm with the 99. I'm uh, trying to make ends meet, trying to keep my job and pay down my debt. And it seems like all the government or, or anybody really cares about are the people who already have all the money. Who is the 99 percent? We're all the 99%. I mean, the 99% is everyone who uh, is trying to make ends meet and is having a hard time doing it. Everybody who's trying to pay their bills, trying to pay their debt. And the 1% are, you know, the people who are just accruing more and more money and have everything they need but are, but are trying to get more power. Who do you think are the 99%? Well, it would be... The children, the people that work for a living, the people that would like to be working for a living that are unemployed or underemployed, the people that are not represented by in our government policies, they, they have uh, no opportunities, uh, the young people are coming up feeling like their future is foreclosed on them, they've got student loans, repay and no job prospects. I also had an opportunity to ask the protesters uh, what they felt about the media criticism that the people who are demonstrating in Wall Street don't, that they do not have a, a unified message, that they are leaderless, and that somehow this detracts from their message, from, from what they are doing. I asked the protesters whether they agreed with this, and I also asked them what they thought was the message of the protesters who are organizing and occupying across the country, and here's what they had to say. That, they, that what is needed is that they want to be heard and that they want to exercise their powers, same as myself. And I felt that I was heard and that I've exercised my powers today. So as long as we're not being ignored and we're going to achieve something through being heard, then that is the goal. Uh, yeah, I was wondering that coming down, what, what are the ultimate goals? I think they're trying to... I think primarily they're, they're fighting corporate greed, enormous corporate profits at the expense of the working man who can't even survive at today's wages anymore. I, I think they're protesting against the war also, the, all the wars that are going on and the senseless 
loss of life on both sides and the financial burden it's putting on all the taxpayers. Well, I went to the General Assembly last night and um, a bunch of my friends have been attending the General Assemblies pretty much since they started and we've been talking a lot about that and, and the idea is not so much that we as a collection need to have one single message or goal, but the idea is that we all have grievances, like we all have things that are bothering us. Like I saw someone sign that said, you know, because of the 1% I have 99 problems. You know, and, and I feel like that's that's a lot of what it is, is that we are all being affected in a lot of different ways, but we've decided that the source is, if not one thing, then maybe like three things. And so we're trying to come together against the things that we do agree upon and also support each other in, you know, our various endeavors. So it's, yeah, I mean, I think that it's kind of accurate is that, sure, we don't have one goal that encompasses all of us, but we are all here together so that we can accomplish all of our goals. I forgot to mention earlier uh, when I was talking about the protesters marching through downtown Los Angeles that the police presence was, was actually felt for the first time. However, the police mostly rode in cars. There were a couple of police cars behind the protesters following them as they marched through the streets. They were actually marching in the streets and not on the sidewalk. I saw one police officer on foot. Um, but other than that, there, there were really no other police officers. It's really a, a stark com a difference from what's going on in Wall Street where, where you, you see so many uh, uh, police officers on the streets um, arresting people but here there's very the, the, it's very minimal presence and and there's only there's been great deal of cooperation between the police and the protesters uh, I still I have not seen any confrontation whatsoever between the police and the protesters um, again we yet to see uh, as the days go uh, progress whether or not this will continue uh, the protesters are currently uh, on the north side of City Hall they were asked to move because there was uh, a, a film being made on the other side of the city hall. I, I do not know if they will be moving back over there, uh, but at 10 o'clock they will have to move to the sidewalk where they will sleep overnight and tomorrow they will move back at 6 a.m. onto the grass to continue their protests. We will be back here tomorrow uh, with, with another broadcast uh, with more interviews and more clips and um, I look forward to bringing that information to you. Uh, this wraps up our broadcast for tonight. I'm Margot Pias for Inside Out News. Good night, and I will see you tomorrow.